Hey guys, Aaron here again with my buddy Conrad, and today we are going to do part three of the assembly of his 997 engine. This is our workbench, and assembly-wise, all we're going to do is take three pistons and attach them to three connecting rods. But uh, there's a lot to learn and a lot to make sure you're doing correctly. So I'm just going to let Conrad tell you about all his research and what we're going to do today. Perfect. Uh, all right. Thanks, Aaron. Um, got my buddy shirt on. Yes. Uh, that was a <laughs> huge fan favorite. So recapping, uh, last time indexing, which is making sure things are aligned in the proper place, we put our connecting rods with the serial number. And remember, the serial number on these particular K1 connecting rods is where the tang is. We put all the tangs facing down. I know this is upside down towards the IMS. This is the IMS, these are facing down, and we wanna to continue to keep that consistency throughout our engine build. Um, Aaron and I decided to bring uh, the heads here to show an interesting thing, at least on the 997, I believe it's the same on the 996 generation of engines, but um, so, so this is down, right? This is towards the, towards the bottom, towards the floor, and this is up, this is the intake side, this is the exhaust side. If you look here, very carefully, the intake valves are bigger than the exhaust valves. Now, for those of you that are experts, you already knew this, but it's going to be relevant when we talk about aftermarket, um, aftermarket pistons. On the factory piston, this was one of my old pistons, there are markers like an arrow, but the, the piston appears to be fairly symmetrical. Uh, right, and there are a couple of differences in my aftermarket setup that I'll note here. One is this uh, clip, the clip that holds the um, uh, the what do you call it, the connecting pin. rod pin, wrist pin, yes, in has a little uh, indent on it or a little uh, side side piece, uh, which is not the case on these aftermarket. In fact, many people like Jake recommend to shave those off to make the insertion of that clip uh, easier. But on these, you do have them. So um, very interesting. If, if you're going to do factory um, factory pistons, make sure you index them correctly. I'm not gonna go over that in, in this video because you know I really, I really don't know. So I'll set this to the side. Factory arrangement. Now on these K1s, these are K1's beauty uh, jewelry pieces. I've already weighed them. I've already shaved them off to be within you know, 0.1 grams or less. Um, you can see it's very subtle, but the smaller um, indents, these are the valve indents on the pistons, these are smaller than these. And you can tell basically because this area here is a little bit wider than those. So these must go with the exhaust, which must, must go down. <laughs> That's supposed to be a D. I thought it was a P. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think I did a better job with the other one, but yes, I, and it got me confused actually, but this is going to go down, meaning facing the IMS. Um, so facing for the uh, exhaust. For the exhaust. Yes. And I marked these also with, this is a much better D I think. Oh yeah. That's uh, uh, with with uh, the serial, and remember the tangs? We want to keep consistency. So indexing is very important for this part uh, of the build. The, these beautiful pistons came with assembly lube of their own, which we're going to use for this particular step. Um, and so the main purpose of this video is going to be the use of, of this uh, wrist pin clip installation tool. And it's going to give us a chance to, to exercise that six times. I've never done it before. I know people say it's it's critical, so we'll get a chance to practice uh, six times. So we're gonna clear the bench. We brought this only as a reference, right? Uh, so you guys could see this. Uh, by the way, this uh, vapor honing was awesome. Uh, got a lot of criticism that, you know, vapor honing leaves uh, media in it and you have to take some of the, uh, <coughs> the uh, freeze plugs out, which we will. We're gonna re be removing these freeze plugs, cleaning this really, really nice, but, um, Charlie at, at Rocket Vapor Honing did a fantastic job, really cost effective. Uh, I like how they look. Now it's just a matter of spending an obsessive amount of time cleaning them, making sure all the media is out, which I will do, because again, I'm in no rush. Beautiful job, Charlie. And where is he from? Uh, Charlie is just north of Greensboro, um, North Carolina. Does a great job, does it in his house. He's done, 
I mean, I'll show you a couple of other things he's done for me. He, he did these, um, uh, these are the uh, heat shields for, uh, you know, right, that sit right above the spark plugs. Uh, he did, check this out. Giving him a plug here. Ooh. This part of the front, front console. console. Right. Yeah. I mean, this was looks horrible. Like a, looks like a new part in a bag. Yeah. Uh, and this is part of like the front console assembly. He did, he did a really, really good job. And I'm considering sending him some of my uh, valves. I, I want to see if I can do it myself. But uh, there, that's, that's where we are. So we're going to get ourselves up uh, to do the next part of this. So um, first thing I want to do, and this is because uh, a buddy of mine that I'm talking to in Texas had this problem where... They actually sent him the wrong, the wrong wrist pin for one of the applications. Yikes. Uh, yeah, and he spent a lot of time, and it was luckily before he put Bank 2. Remember, Bank 2 is going to be installed um, on the, uh, uh, on, on the uh, what, help me out here. Blind. On the, uh, uh, blind. Uh, blind on the block. Yeah. The, these are, so this is practice for, for the, the very critical yeah. set. His bank two is the hard part. Bank one, you get to assemble outside of the engine. Exactly. And, and hopefully we'll make a mistake and we'll get to redo it. Uh, Aaron and I. <laughs> we like mistakes. We're good at mistakes. Mistakes we love are good. Mistakes. Um, so, so here's one step that not a lot of people cover, but I want to prefit all of this. I haven't done it. These are, these are new parts. That, uh, they've been cleaned and I've put them in, in baggies. But we're going to dry fit all three of these to make sure that, that they fit. So... Um, take these wrist pins out of their little baggies. Um, there is the possibility, I mean, it's, it's been said in some of the forums that the metal composition of the factory rods um, have a, a, a more sensitive or more, a higher coefficient of expansion. And so sometimes if you're operating in a, in a garage that's too cold, they may not fit. This is a warm uh, garage. Um, so it shouldn't be a problem. You said rods. Did you mean pistons or both? Everything. So, Everything. so, okay. so, uh, all the dimensions are critical, right? The, the dimension inside the rod, uh -huh. the dimension, um, inside yep. the piston and the wrist pin. So okay. the dry fit that we're going to do here is we're going to dry fit. And again, all these pieces have been balanced. They've been matched. So I want to keep them in order. Uh, Put the down, down, right? And so you want to make sure, first you want to make sure that this fits. And on this one, it's supposed to fit in, in either direction. Try. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If they don't, we'll sort of... All right, so this fits here. A little scary there. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is where we, we, we like to fail, right? If, if possible. And then So I'm not gonna put put them all in, but if they fit here and they fit here, I will consider that success. a dry fit success. <laughs> so no no jokes please, Aaron. Right. <laughs> um Again, probably an unnecessary step, but. Yeah, I would say uh, pretty necessary, especially, <laughs> especially for bank two. Yes, for bank two, we absolutely uh, will, will do that. Because when I removed my pistons, I had to, if you guys saw my video on that, I had to use like a hammer and hammer these pins out. They were so tight and that really concerned me because there's no way that I could put them back in like using this tool as you'll see how you're supposed to do it if that were still the case so all right so we have successfully completed the dry fit this is um a wrist pin from a prior um, it's the factory one it's a factory one yeah 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 uh that we're going to use as part of the as part of the tool so now we are going to review this tool and oh um i don't know if you want to talk about it this this, uh, I bought this toolkit. I think it was on, on Amazon. We'll, I'll give you the links uh, and stuff for it. It's a copy from Europe, I guess, of the factory. Uh, there's also a faultless tool. I don't know if it's being sold anymore, but um, you don't have to spend a whole bunch of money if you don't want to. Uh, these are adequate. 
Um, I think we're going to find out. Yeah, we'll see. I'll put a, I'll put a link to him in the description of yeah. this video there. If we have success. Yes. If we have success. I wonder if he's fit too. Yeah, okay. So, um, this tool is supposed to help with the installation of the clip that goes on the wrist pin. Right? It's supposed to be pretty tight there. This has some weight. It goes sort of like right here. And you sort of slam it into place uh, there, bang, and uh, yeah, installing them. So we're gonna go through the exact process uh, to get this done, and we're only using one of the tools that is provided uh, in this kit. Uh, in this portion, we're all we're gonna do is load the clips, and these clips came with the aftermarket pistons. They do not have that protrusion, right? They're just regular clips. We're gonna load it into the tool, which is going to help us um, install those on the recess. If you see, there's a there's a valley, a little bit of a valley there where these must be installed. And if we do this properly, they will be um, installed the first time around. If we don't, uh, we'll get a chance to practice. I'll just show right here, there is a little recess in here where that clip is gonna end up. We hope, yes. That's where it's supposed to be. So, um, the way to load these is if you put the opening towards the top, and again, I've never done this, so oh, this is pretty hard. <clears throat> load. <clears throat> man, man, this is not easy. Keep on, I think I need to keep on putting that back in there. Okay, looped it. So, I feel like I need, it needs to go a little bit further than that. And once you start rotating the piece up there. Eh, no, doesn't seem to want to go anywhere. And that is really... Oh, there we go. So, I just wanted to pass it past the recess there. And then... Once it's past that recess, again, make sure you're wearing eye protection. Okay, got to get all of it past the recess. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to square it. See, all of it is past the recess. I'm trying to square it a little bit to get it kind of, but it's not, it's not even at all. So what you do, is we're gonna put, this is a used uh, wrist pin. We're going to use this and the tool. If we're successful. Is that tool, let me show them the tip of that tool real quick. So this oh, yeah. tool has a little recess where that pin fits right into. And it should, if everything goes well, it should load it. Yep, it is in there. Whew. All right, let's see. Why are you standing back? Just so I can get it all in the frame. I'm not scared of you. <laughs> oh, I heard a clip. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. Now it worked. Can you see it? Yeah, that's right where it should be on the ridge. Okay, so what was lessons secret? learned here. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it should be. It seems that we were having problems with the factory. See, this is tapered. I don't know if this didn't go where it's supposed to be. It, it wasn't going down far enough. Hmm. All right, so now we have this loaded properly, squarely, right? Into the gun, <laughs> into the <laughs> sleeve. And what we're going to do is we're going to install that in either one. It, it, it doesn't make a difference here. Uh, where you install it, it will make a difference in bank two. These are the bank ones. So um, 
presuming that is proper and nice and square, we're gonna go ahead and install it here. So this tool is adjustable. Um, the clip sits inside and it must be delivered to the piston with this depth. So went ahead and measured the depth from uh, where this tool will sit to where the bottom of the clip needs to be. And I did my best to match that here. All right. So I had to adjust it just a hair to make sure that that, that, that worked. If it's off, like if it doesn't seat or if it gets past it, we'll adjust it and we'll do it again. Hopefully it won't work, so we have to do it again. All right, so what we do is we will seat this here. It's a nice little counter bore for it to sit in flat. Yep. And then insert the tool. That nice and vertical. All right, here goes nothing, I guess. I rotate it this way a little more. Yeah, yeah beautiful. Ready <laughs> for the cameras? All right, here we go. That didn't go anywhere. All right, let's see what happened. Oh, that's not even. It's not long enough. No, no, no. It's not. The clip is not leaving its groove. Oh, so the bore of it's going past the... No, no, it's foot. just not, like, the... It's not pop out. <laughs> yeah. What happened to our measurement? Did I measure it wrong? Oh, I was measuring it to here. It's, it's actually uh, going... It stops at the... It's stopping... Aha! <laughs> nice point of failure. Thank you. All right, so this has to go all the way. This needs a lot of more room. That's interesting. Still needs more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's about that's about right. So that handle is just threaded into the rod itself, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Seems like the right measurement there. Take two. Yep. So now you have enough time to. to do it. All right. Excellent. See, I hate it when things just work because you never know. Oh, let's make sure that clip is still in there. Still square. Still square. Hold it nicely in there. Should I be holding it from here? <laughs> Did that come out? Did that separate? Yeah. I mean, it did before. I, I took it apart before. Oh. It was meant to be a sleeve. I didn't know that it was like that. Huh. Hmm. So, here's the challenge. That thing is in the little groove and it's not popping out. It, it's just so stuck much compressive force, it is stuck in the groove. Yeah. So it seems that it needs to be out of the groove in order for it to work. Interesting. Mm hmm I didn't realize that that thing was two pieces. <laughs> yeah. So this is not pushing it proper. Mm-hmm. 
Jeez, how am I gonna get that out of there? <laughs> All right, just have a little pick, trying to pull that thing back out of the groove. You're not wearing your safety goggles, man. I'm using my phone as my safety goggles. <laughs> Dad, did I do the same thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, put it in the groove. So what I'm doing to make it easy is I'm pulling it back. It's out, you're safe. Thank goodness. Uh, so what this needs to do is not be like that, but be like that, right? Don't give it a chance to be in the groove. See, I put it down too uh, far. I see what you did. Yes. Yeah, right? If, if you go like this, if you give it just enough space, that will go in the groove. No, this needs to be there to hold it. This actually has a self-centering mechanism in place. So when I was trying to put it down too far, I shouldn't have. Let's see if I can do it right this time. Damn it, it went in. It went in again. I heard it. Yep. It's not supposed to go in there. It's supposed to be like right above it. All right, let's do it again. I think once we get the technique done, we'll be able to make it so we can watch the Formula One race. <laughs> yeah, maybe this is where the uh, benefits of the faultless tool come in over the Amazon one. It just yep. requires a little more effort. All right, so. Let's not put it down too far in to the tool. Let's turn it around. All right, it's not quite. All right, all right. Looks like we got it right this time and there's a different technique to putting it in. So now it's not, it's not sitting on the groove. You can see the full exposure of that. All right. And I'm trusting that my measurement has not. Here we go, Aaron. Um, sounded solid. And it did not install properly. Nope, it installed on the top of it, so that means that I left. To go a little further in. Mm -hmm. I probably didn't have this piece. So if I have this piece in enough, it should make it all the way down. But, oh, that's one of the things that you wanna really press this because if you leave any room for it, it will it will um, install right at the bottom of it. Oh, so the outside of that is the tapered part that goes into the channel. Yeah, so I guess I got my wish of... Um, multiple tries. Yeah, multiple tries. Yeah, definitely uh, it's a good thing that you don't have to do bank two first because that would be bad. That would have sucked. <laughs> All 
Oh, one other thing. I don't know why this notch is there. I'm gonna install it opposite the notch. It seems to get caught. You're already getting better at it, aren't you? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, what I thought was gonna be like half an hour. <laughs> it seems like you just barely, barely get it in as shallow as you can. Yep. And then flip it a little. Problem with getting it too shallow is um, can't get these ends in. See that? Mm -hmm. All right. Instead of pushing it too far down with that wrist pin, do you want to use the wrist pin just to hold it in place and use the other thing from oh, the bottom to, yeah, to square it that way? A good idea. Oh, and now's a good time to mention why we couldn't use the stock wrist pin to do that. Yep. We figured out that the stock wrist pin didn't fit God damn into that the diameter. Same freaking thing happened. Oh, no. Look at that. Yep. Huh. Yep. Right at the tip. All right. Yes, that's where we want it. It seems an awful close to the... Just has less, less distance to travel to uh, be installed. All right. But here, so yeah, this stock wrist pin doesn't fit on this tool. Oh, wait. Yeah. Yep. It only goes like this. So <laughs> this tool will not be able to install these once we have to use it for bank two, which is very interesting. All right, so you gotta keep pressure on this. Ready? Did that sound good? <laughs> you tell me. Man, same problem as before. Oh, you know what it could have been? I need more room. And I miscalculated how much all this needs to be inserted. I think it's proven to me. <laughs> I mean, it's in there. It's nice and even. Oh, it's like on the ridge, though. It just needs to be poked a tiny bit mm -hmm. further. So maybe just push this again. No, I'm going to, I want to do it right. Making sure not to scratch anything. All right, we'll get this right. All right, here we go. Put it in barely. Turn it around-ish. Um, oh, no, we needed this, maybe? So when trying this for the first time and you don't get it right, don't feel bad. Yeah. All right, it's nice and square. Um, I'm gonna give it a little bit more room. So somehow, by the end of this, I need to make sure we have the right measurement of how deep this goes. Mm -hmm. We don't want this happening. <laughs> yeah. Ta-da! <laughs> hey, victory. 
See that? Oh yeah. Zoom in on that guy. Well, I don't know which way, which way is the best way to do that. You, you hold it. With your filthy hands. Oh yeah. Now you can see it fully in there. And you can see that little uh, groove right there. If we had one of those hooked things, you would have to make the hook be right Line there. Line up. And and God, that'd be horrible. That'd be just incremental pressure. <laughs> okay, so I think the wise thing is to install these by themselves. Get three sets of practices on um, on the one side oh, yeah. before you put you. Yeah. lube and... All this other good stuff. All right, so a couple of techniques. Put this at a 45 to that thing. It's probably for the, for the clip. Then put this over on this side. Actually, on this one, can use. Yes? No? Yeah. All the way in. Yeah, I don't want to use that. So that one is nice and square, but at a different depth, depth but not in the... Yeah, anywhere above that groove. Oh, look at that. It, the tool carries that. See that? It carries the, the, the clip. So I guess as long as you keep this sort of. Yeah, you can tap it shallower. Is that what you're yeah. trying to do? Mm -hmm. Okay. What are we doing now? What are we doing? What are we doing? We're doing a different piston. And make sure this one doesn't have it, right? We did this on the one side, we're going to do it on the other side. So normally you would, if you had the clip there, you would have to clip it. And it makes sense that, um, so if you would have the clip, that clip would be very, very shallow. So it makes sense that it's not very deep, right? You're, you're, there, there's that groove in, in this tool. Mm -hmm. If you were installing the ones with the clip, the, the, the clip would be super shallow. Mm -hmm. It stands to reason that this would be shallow as well. Okay. All right. Straight. Press it down. Imagine that feeling the first time you do that on bank two. It's <laughs> just... And that happens. Oh. Why am I getting such problems? I, maybe I'm not being forceful enough. Maybe I'm installing this too deep. Right? Could be. Maybe this just needs to be very shallow. I'm going to try that. All right, attempt 12. We're gonna try to get this square yet shallow. That felt good. Okay, so there's a square slash shallow. All right, we're gonna increase the length but not the girth. <laughs> okay. 
So we are as shallow as the groove. We're not really square though. I'm not comfortable with the squareness. Oh, maybe it was an optical delusion. <laughs> nice and even. It, it wasn't even actually, uh, actually, so. All right. So this is all the way practice. seated. And you're thinking just drop it? That'd be a uniform thing, but for bank two, you're gonna have to smash it, so I don't know. Yeah. It might be worth just practicing for right, bank two. Yeah, it's not going at all. Really? Sounded good. Nope. No, because it didn't go all the length of it for some reason. God, I better get good at this. Huh. So the way I take it out, just to prevent any issues, is I go on that piece there so I don't sure, scratch it. Yep. Huh. This is a puzzler. I believe maintaining all the pressure in the world. And he's had he said that the key is to maintain all the pressure in the world for this part of the tool here to prevent any gaps. All right? Looked good. All the gap got filled. God, it's like Pretty almost bad. there. Look Are at we that. shortened it too much? Yep, that's what it is. Okay. Let me just put it in there. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. All right, because we at least we have to do one experiment with this, right? Here, you grab it and do Two a quick successes. inspection on, on your own. Um, what do you think? Let's see. No, that, that's legitimately what we're looking for, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. That clip is in. Yeah. And on this side, it's every part of the groove. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, that's not a good test. If you push the wrist pin in, it should <laughs> not be able to move. <laughs> and have enough room for a groove, hopefully. Somewhere there. Where is the groove? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. Oh. That's the one. Damn it, Aaron. New one. <laughs> Ah, uh, see the groove? groovage? See the groovage? That's the groovage. Room. That will be part two of our daily challenge. <laughs> okay, two successes in 37, 38 attempts. 
Batting average has <laughs> we've seen better. We we have seen better. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah. I don't think they'd be moving us to the majors. No, no, and I don't think I want to be. It's too much pressure. I mean, what do you do with all that money? <laughs> all right. So let's see what the lessons learned have been. We put this in. Not too deep because we don't want it to go past that little groove. You're kind of using that little notch there as yeah, a, as a guide, and then. Uh -huh. And I'm doing my best to put the two pieces in, and I'm using the old guide pin to sort of coax them into into play. But I think if I'm going to do that, I probably need to have this tool. Right here again, remember your eye protection. Yeah, that, see that helps a lot. Sandwich them in. And then what I do is I sort of and that went like too far. I just applied the proper amount of pressure. Yeah, look at that. I wonder if some lube would help too. I don't know. All right. Super important to get it nice and flat there. Super important that we have the right depth. Depth here. I think we have it now. All right. If we know what the hell we're doing. <laughs> Super important piece of this is to have an enormous amount of pressure on this so that you don't have any gaps. Pressure. Pressure in more than one sense. Yes. Oh. Oops. Ooh, that didn't sound good. Nope. Did it clip in? <laughs> it did not. Yeah. Okay. Man, this is going to be a pain in the ass if we don't get this right. Nope, it, it went in the groove. Yeah, it still doesn't seem like that's long enough. It's, it's sort of like it's getting shorter hit. on us. So how long it should be from here. Yeah, because this is transporting, transporting the, the, I'm gonna try it a little bit longer. I don't think it's gonna hurt. Yeah. All right, we'll transport it a little bit longer. All right, so I'm getting a little bit better at putting it into the groove. You know what? I'm just going to put some lube. I mean, it's going to have to lube it anyway, right? Make things flow a little bit easier. I don't know. Hmm. Let's see some if stuff. this is better or worse. Yeah. I'll just clean it. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I should try to see if I can do this with... do it by hand. But I, I'm going to need to be able to do this with a factory wristband, so. No, that's not going to work at all. Oh yeah, you're going to need one extra wristband, aren't you? Yeah, that's what it seems like. I forgot when you get down to the last one. Okay, all right, that popped out. Put too shallow, maybe too much loop. I'm going to put it a little bit deeper this time. Oh, that helps. If I put it in a little bit deeper, 
Yeah, but it's it's a game of <laughs> getting inches. too close to that. Uh, yeah, the groove in there. Yeah, there's the sleeve. But it makes it easy to insert. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oops. I wonder if there's a no, way of recovering sounds. it from there. Once it's there, could we do something? No, there's no way. Oh, so, okay, so that's the technique. Press it down here. So I have it super shallow there. Mm -hmm. See that? Yep. See if super shallow works. <laughs> Everything's tight. Ah, you can feel it right away. It popped out. Hmm. Still no good. So it was. Uh. Oops. It's falling in that valley. And the only way it falls in that valley is when it goes in, it lifts the tool. Or if it... Or if the tool shifts left or right, creating a gap. Okay. Uh, more uses for this torque spec book. Yep. We're using the correct number of pages to try to keep this thing level now. Oh, another so piece is I'm I'm I should probably do that before I. Get that fully tightened on. If this doesn't work, I don't know what will. I made the length of travel just a little bit longer. Yeah, that's way long. <laughs> if this doesn't work. <laughs> We've done everything possible here. And of course, as soon as we say, if this doesn't work, that works. So lessons learned. Yes. I think, Aaron, I think yes. I wasn't seating this right. Uh, that would make sense. Yep. Yeah. Um, so that needs to be seated right. So you just the twisted it on kind of to get it yeah, seated? Yeah, yeah. And, and there may have been some motion before, so I just twisted it and made sure that nothing... How are we going to prove this? <laughs> um, Let's I do the third one. <laughs> well, we already did the third one. I mean, uh, one on the other side. Sorry. All right, let's do one on the other side. And, um, and we can all watch. Now, you lost, now you lost what page we were on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I think if we're successful with this, we got something. All right. Need a little confidence here. Going into turn three. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I think I'm getting the technique for putting this. All right, let's not get cocky here. All right, so <laughs> that's loaded. Whew. We are going to do, let's make sure the indexing, let's not forget, down, down. All right, so that's the that goes down, this goes this way. And we're gonna lube. Brush. Special lube. Yeah. 
paper. Too much of that. This is going to lubricate on first start, so super important to get all of that. No hairs. Hairs. And then we lube our handy dandy. So, down. Down. And put this part of the way. We decide that we do not have the pin in. That's right. That's right. It's a helpful tip. It's a good test. Make sure. That yeah. All right. Double check. Because I'm not doing this again. <laughs> that is interesting how much movement there is here. Okay. Nice and loose. All right. This is where... This is a simulation of what's going to happen when we're truly inside bank two. <laughs> so we better have success here. Now that it's lubed, I don't know if you want to use your book. No. <laughs> um, something else. Um, although with this, there's already a support, so I just need to make sure I match the angle nicely. So a couple of things. Put that in here. Ah-ha-ha. Ha. And twisted and inserted. Pin in all the way. The pin was not in all the way. Yeah. A little bit more complicated. One time. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh>, sorry. <laughs> we can bleep. In? Nope. That is not even in the groove. If it was, if, if all, if, if the ends were in the groove, I would. God, I'm gonna have to get a super long pick. <laughs> I don't know what else I could have done uh, that time to get that perfect. This is the pin. The There's enough room. It's not blocking it at all. Nope. Yeah. But you go in and you make sure you knock the pin in. Um. I wonder if we have to support this better because now that I've hit it with this, mm -hmm. there's more room. If I support this at a normal angle so that this won't go anywhere. Double usage of tool, I think. Right. Because I'm seeing that, that, that it's... <laughs> There's a lot more room now than there was before. And maybe I didn't have that quite in. Mm -hmm. Now we feel confident the pin is seated. Well, not, not only that, there's a groove right now for the pin. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, I'm not exactly sure. We had done that. It, it is part of wh when it's you know looking ahead on some of Jake's videos. It is part of the process to um, <clears throat> to ensure that the pin that the wrist pin is properly seated. Mm -hmm. um, and we just did that with a tap here. Triple check. There's a groove. 
What I need to find is a socket. What's this? Or I need to learn how to do it with this. <laughs> That's another reason not to have the gap. So ever so slight, there, there is that gap there and I've been aligning it, which makes those pins perhaps go off a little bit. Might be a reason not to align it there. Again, I'm, I'm looking for every potential point of failure. Mm. That might be one of them. All right. That is a force. Yeah. We still clip. Ooh, that's a good sign. We didn't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what have we learned, Aaron? Oh. Um, what have we learned? Push the wrist pin in. Yes. Um, make this shallow uh -huh. oops make this shallow do not put your opening here because it might it might impact it so put the opening other than where that little opening is and yeah i think it's oh, solid yeah it's solid <laughs> all right time check all right so a lot of lessons learned okay um so we're gonna do the same Make sure that everything is down, 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 indexing. And uh, yeah, we'll meet the next time. And we're, I think we're gonna be attaching this to the crank. And then we've gotta do all the, the, the ring gapping is gonna be a lot, yes. of, a lot of work. So. All, right. all right, well, we got Formula One to watch. It's the uh, first race of the season yeah, right I'm now fine. in three minutes. So uh, Bahrain, here we come. All right, thanks guys. We'll see you next time.